friends, and welcome to the School Librarian Learning Network podcast. I'm Steve Tatro, and I love talking about all things related to school libraries. I may be an old dog, but I'm always trying to learn new tricks. In each episode of the SLLN podcast, I'll chat with a school librarian about a lesson they love. Hopefully, this can be a place for school librarians to get ideas and find new ways to engage with their students and staff. As a good friend likes to say, we're better together. So I hope this podcast will help school librarians connect with and learn from each other. The opinions and ideas shared in this podcast by myself and my guests are our own and do not reflect those of our school districts. And because school librarians always strive to be good digital citizens, I cite sources when using material that is not my own. Hey everybody, I am so excited. I've got Amanda with us today with a real fun lesson. I was really interested in seeing how this played out. So uh, I can't wait to hear from her, but instead of hearing from me, let's hear from her. So Amanda, welcome. So glad you can be here. My name is Amanda Hunt. Um, on social media, you can find me at The Next Gen Librarian. I am a middle school six through eight uh, library media specialist in New Braunfels, Texas, which is right between San Antonio and Austin. And um, I've been in the profession for 19 years. So I am so excited to share one of my favorite lessons with you today, Steve. That's awesome. 19 years. That is really something. And was that all in middle school? Oh, no. Uh, it, I have a long journey to get where I am. Um, I started as a, um, a social worker at an elementary school. Um, it's actually the elementary school that I went to. Um, my mom was the assistant principal at the time. And so we got to work together for a couple of years. And then I went into the classroom as a third grade teacher and then into the elementary library world and then now into the middle school world at the same middle school that I went to when I was in middle school and that my dad taught at too. So wow. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it was a fun journey to get here, but I'm finally in exactly where I'm supposed to be. So I love the tweens and teens that we work with and yeah. uh, they make it fun every day. <laughs> yeah, you never know what you're going to get. Like every day, new personality, new who knows Absolutely. what's going to go on. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, how did you come up with this lesson that you're going to share with us today? Where did this come um, from? So I am, I'm not a good book talker. Like I, that is not one of my strengths. Um, as much as I love books and love reading, um, I struggle. I just want to be like, it's really good. You should read it. Like that's um, about how that goes. And so um, I was uh, thinking during, the reason I call this turkey bingo is just because I do it in the month of November. It's, you can do it any time of the year. Um, but I was kind of struggling to think of a lesson to do. Um, you know, I love research and resources and teaching ed tech tools and all of that fun stuff. And it's great. But for me, the number one thing that I that I want to be instilling in students is a love of reading. And so I was trying to think of how I could do book talks, but have them already written out um, so that I could just like read from a script, but not have it sound like I'm reading from a script. And so I was, um, I was thinking about how I could do this in a fun way. Um, November and December is a really crazy time in a school, as you know, and um, I wanted to do sort of like a, a challenge and get the kids excited um, and also recommend books without them knowing I was recommending books. And mm -hmm. so I was going through our popular <laughs> titles in the library, um, books, a lot of books that have been made into TV shows or into movies that the kids would recognize without probably having read the book maybe yet. And so um, I started writing out these um, explanations and I was like, well, how can I do this where we're reading out summer? but the kids are trying to guess what book it is. So I was like, I'm going to put the titles in bingo cards and make a bunch of different ones so that they don't all hit bingo at the same time. And <laughs> I'm going to read the summary of the book. And I give a lot of clues in the summaries. Like, um, you know, if it's, if it's Hunger Games, I'll say Katniss or I'll say the districts or, you know, things like that, that they recognize from popular culture. Um, and then I also tell them they can work together and things like that if they, you know, are at the same table and and then when they get a bingo or they think they get a bingo, a lot of them think they, they picked the right book and it's not the book that they were thinking of. Um, uh, then um, they get a candy or a treat or something like that. And so there was incentive for them. If you, if you don't know, um, food is a really big motivator for middle school students. <laughs> um, I don't know if, that, if, if the listeners don't know that or not, but I, I, hot tip. 
Um, so I definitely feel like that was a huge motivator. And so then after that, kids are like, what book was that? Oh my gosh, I didn't know that one was a movie. I didn't know that was a show. Um, you know, and so then I have them all like out and then they just fly off the shelves when they're checking them out. So it was my little way of like sneaking in a bunch of book talks without them really knowing if that makes sense. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's so clever in that you are taking something that can be sort of difficult. Like, cause I, I love to do book talks, but like you said, like just remembering What's that yes. book that I, you know, I know I read that, but I read it like a year ago or right. you've read so many things, which one is which one? And exactly. like giving yourself that leg up of, okay, so like, I'm going to just have some pre ready to go sort of things. Yeah. And I, I started the lesson in like 2019. And since then, obviously like a lot of books have been adapted into movies yeah. and TV shows, and I'm so excited about that. Um, especially, it's funny, um, over break, seeing all the kids getting back into Percy Jackson because the show is is in now and um, being redone, so thank good goodness. Too. Yes. <laughs> they definitely <laughs> redeemed themselves. Um, and, um, new books, like um, I think it's Ali Novak, um, The Walter Brothers. Um, that's, that's a really big one. If you're not hmm. familiar, that one dropped yeah. on Netflix. Um, it's like like my life with the Walter boys. Um, and that okay. one dropped right before the break and the kids were going crazy about it. And I'm like, huh. y'all know it, it was a book first, right? Did y'all know that? And so I had no they idea. were like, yes, it was a book first. And so I'm, um, it's just, you know, they're loving these shows. They're falling in love with characters. A lot of them that have been around for a long time, such as, you know, Harry Potter and Percy Jackson, um, they're getting a new audience. And a lot of them in, the, in that case, like don't know that they were books first. And so it's a way for me to um, kind of let them know that, but also put other titles on their radar that they may not have known about beforehand that they're already invested in. You know, they come in with this prior knowledge of these books and these characters and and they think they know what's going <laughs> to happen. But I'm like, y'all, a lot of times they change things from the book to the movie yeah. adaptation. And so they love comparing them. And I get those comments a lot. Like, I didn't know they changed this. And the ending was totally different. I'm like, yeah. Do you see why I get upset when I'm like, oh, the book was better, you know? So it's fun to have those conversations with them um, after they make those connections between the show or the movie and the book. So I love too that in the write up you did for this lesson on your blog, you mentioned that you can sort of tune the clues. You can sort of find different, you know, depending on your audience that you're doing this with whether it's the same grade level, but different ability levels, or if it's different grade levels, like there's so many ways you can kind of play with this and make it fit your population. Absolutely. So at middle school, I'm hitting like the most popular teens, tweens, middle grade titles, you know, um, but for elementary, you know, you'd want to take it down and maybe focus more on like Captain Underpants and Dogman and, and all of those types of books um, that kids are into. And you can with this. And then for high school, I think it'd be really fun to do it with like your AP classes. Um, if you're getting into the classics, um, you know, a lot of them kind of have a baseline of what those books are and who the characters are when they get to high school. So I think it'd be really fun to do as like a nice brain break or it's a nice way to start the year if you wanted something like a fun lesson to do. Um, but yeah, I do have them um, editable in the Google Drive that I link. Um, it's in pages. Um, if you uh, use, uh, if you're not an Apple user, um, you can import them into PowerPoint or any other um, Canva. Um, that's just what I was using at the time when I made them. And so mm -hmm. um, they are editable. So if you wanted to change any of the titles out and and switch that out. I think it'd be really uh, fun to do in an English class or in, um, you know, you could do this even in like other content areas. You could do it in theater um, with different shows or plays or, you know, things oh, yeah. like that. So um, I think it'd be, it's fun to adapt and make it fit for your audience. Yeah. And, you know, you're talking about how you look at the book and the movie and how they can be different. Like I could see that working with one of your advanced classes too, where you're like, you have both the book and the movie on the card and you've got to differentiate like which one is the one, like we watched this version in class, but maybe there's, you know, something else that's in the book and kind of get the kids really thinking about it. That would be awesome. In fact, I think it'd be fun to do like a whole a whole card, the all the different Romeo and Juliets, like all the way from like <laughs> no Romeo and Juliet, like the picture, but like from the kids all the way up to like all the different versions that are out there. I think that would be so fun. That's a good idea. 
Oh yeah. yeah. You could do that for Christmas Carol too. Oh so yes. many Christmas carols. Oh. So many. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. So many possibilities. I love this. Yes. So you had mentioned in your write-up that um, you kind of seemed to touch base with the ELA teachers about this. In what way were you sort of bringing the ELA teachers in? Um, so I did this lesson. It was kind of on a whim. And I um, for I do it digitally now. But at the time, I printed out something like, you know, 50-something bingo cards and laminated them all so the kids could use dry erase markers oh, and things like that on them clever. and just erase in between classes. And um, nice. and so, um, but we are a one-to-one -one iPad district now. I mean, well, we have been for a long time, but um, they're really, my kids are really coming in with a lot more prior knowledge of it now. And so, we use, um, I use it all digitally now, but um, for the kids that maybe don't have their iPad or forgot it that day or whatever, I do have extra cards to use. And I was going through and I was doing all of this and I was like talking to my teachers and I'm like, hey, I'm going to do this lesson. Um, what books are y'all planning to teach this year or what books have you already taught this year? So that I wanted to make sure to get them on the cards because it's hilarious when you're reading the description and they all get it at the same time and they start like screaming screaming and yelling because they're like, oh, my God. it's like they're reading <laughs> Lewis Sacker's holes in sixth grade. And so like, they're like, we just read that part. And I'm like, yeah, like I did this with the purpose, you know? And so um, I always like to get with my ELA teachers ahead of time and just say, hey, you know, what, what books have y'all done? Especially my, my smaller groups, like my, um, my English language learners and um, my special education resource classes, oh, yeah. they read a lot more, um, novels like small group rather than like whole group because that's like a whole other thing of how many copies they have to have and stuff they have a little bit more mm. flexibility with those um, push out classes and the resource classes and things like that so i want to make sure i include all of the titles that they've even discussed or read like an excerpt from so that the kids are making those connections between hey the librarian and the ela teachers like we collaborate like that's a thing yeah um, and, <laughs> and we talk and so um i i love including books that they have I've read like especially like I, for me I can always guess that the kids have read Wonder at this point in their lives by the time they get <laughs> to sixth grade um, they've probably done it as a read aloud in elementary or they have themselves have read the R.J. Palacio masterpiece um, but it's just that's one that I know I can throw in there and they've read it or they've seen the movie and so they can make that connection but I always want to bring in the ones that like the teachers are doing with them in class too. That's a great idea. Hmm. Anytime we can collaborate is always, in my mind, Absolutely. an automatic win. Yeah. Absolutely. And talking about ELL, like now you got me thinking like you could maybe even do some sort of like video components that might help the ELL kids. Maybe they are not as familiar with like the, as you're reading it in English, but maybe they see elements. Hmm. Absolutely. It could be a hmm. video. Um, you could um, put it into any sort of like ed tech tool, like if you wanted to use... Um, Flipgrid and the kids could make their own video to kind of respond to oh, some yeah. of the choices. Um, yeah, like you could, um, we could, um, instead of me reading it, yeah, they could watch a clip and say which book was this or which, you know, movie has this been adapted from. So yeah, I think having lots of different options, especially, but it's not just for like for our ELL, they absolutely 100% need that accommodation. But mm -hmm. all of our students, you know, some are more oh, yeah. visual learners, some are auditory learners. And so I love bringing in any different types of of, you know, media that we can show them so that they can really grasp what we're trying to get across in class. So yeah, hundred huh. percent. I love that. Now I'm picturing like you could even do book covers and like blur out the titles and the yeah. names and it could just be, you know, like all different yeah. ways of engaging them. Oh man. That's so now, fun. I love that. Then you turn it into a class project. Like, okay, everybody come up with one clue for one book that you really love. And now you've got a million clues and you've got a million ways to play with that. And they do the work for us. So yes, yes. I love when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about student labor. Let me tell you. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I've done a six word book talk lesson with kids before and all the ones that I got from them, I just save them for the next year when I do it again, or if I skip years or um, when I do uh, blackout poetry, I'm like, Hey, I'm going to keep this one. Um, because I think it's a really good example. So yeah, anytime we can get the kids to give us good examples, that's a win. Oh, a hundred percent. And then, you know, not, a, I, I always kind of phrase it as like, oh, child labor, you know, like <laughs> saving myself work, but it's really about them being engaged and like them having that agency in understanding they're part of the process. Like it's not 
us teaching to them. It's them being part of the learning that's going on, you know? Absolutely. And when we talk about SAMR um, with technology, wanting to make sure that they know it's not just straight like substitution, that we're yes. going all the way up the model so that they are sharing out with the world, because that's something I'm really big about, that we're moving beyond the four walls of this library. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to put this on Blue Sky, or I'm going to put this on Instagram. I'm going to share this on our Apple TV so everybody that comes in gets to see it. I'm going to send it to the district so that they can see the fun that we're having and the lesson that we did. And so then the kids are like, oh, I saw my picture in the, you know, district newsletter. And I'm like, yeah, like what we're doing is important and it matters. And it's another great way to highlight the library and the things that we do in the library. So I'm always about the public relations aspect of the job. (laughs) Oh man, that's so good. I'm so bad at that side of remembering to do that stuff. Like I know it's making a difference and I know the kids are engaged, but it's it's hard to remember that there's a wider audience out there that we can get important support from if we are being cognizant of it. Absolutely. Advocacy is is such a big part of our job because like most of us, we are singletons on our campus. And so if we're the only ones seeing what we do and we're not sharing it out, then people aren't knowing all of the great things that we do in the library until something happens, like a book banning issue yeah. or something like that. And then all they're hearing is the negative. So I'm yeah. always trying to put as much positive out in the world as, as I can and say, look at all the great things we do at our school library <laughs> so that they are aware of that. (laughs) Yes. No, that's so good. That's so important. I love it. I love it so much. And clearly the kids seem to be into it like that they, what kind of reactions do you get to see when they're, when they're doing this? So the one thing I say is don't shout out the answer, right? Um, and and sometimes it's hard, especially when like their ELA teachers like, yeah, we just read that last week. So y'all should know this one. So unless it's like that kind of a response, <laughs> um, they're really good about it. And um, but like they will like, I'm like, okay, y'all can help each other at your tables all you want point, you know, show on your card what it is, that kind of thing. Um but whoever gets the bingo is the person that gets the prize. And so a lot of them are like covering <laughs> their cards and like don't want anyone to look. And it's hilarious to see like how they approach the activity. And um, and so it's just a lot of fun because like they'll be screaming bingo and I'll look and I'm like, sorry, baby, none of these are the ones that I've called so far. <laughs> but like, they're like, I swear that was dog man or diver with the kid. And I'm like, oh no, I haven't said that one yet. And so um, it's so fun for them to like get into it. Cause one bingo is like, you know, prior knowledge. I don't have to explain it. They understand, you know, what bingo is and how it works. And, um, and so we can just jump in and we can do mm-hmm. a lot of different rounds before we have to take care of checkout and things like that. And so um, the more more rounds we can do. Um, so they are motivated. So they're quiet and they're attentive and they're ready. And th- But it is very exciting to see how excited they get. And so it is one of the lessons that I love to do because sometimes it's sit and get. Sometimes they're not as engaged on the iPad as I wanted them to be in a lesson. But this one, I never have to worry about engagement. Like it's 100% every time. That's awesome. And it sounds like you're, it helps your shirk stats too. Like they seem to be going for the books after. A hundred percent. Like if I were to run a report, it would be a big, big jump because sometimes, I mean, uh, like in any school, kids will wander around. And even though my library is genre even though I have stickers and labels and um, displays and I have videos running and I have the flip books for if you like this, read this. Like sometimes there are still kids that that just don't know what to get and they don't want to ask. They don't feel comfortable asking or, or know exactly even what to ask for. So yeah. in this way, they're hearing something like 40, 50, 60 different book talks. And they're like, they'll come up to me and be like, what was that one that you said about the summer, about the girl where she has the two boys and the brother? I'm like, oh yeah, I got it. Like it's right here. So, you know, it's just, um, it's just a different way to get books in kids' hands. Um, And, you know, we're always trying to be the book pushers in any way we can. So it's just another way um, that they can, that they get excited about reading. And I imagine, too, that there's some um, peer reinforcement as kids who, like, if a bunch of people know a title, that maybe is a little bit of a, oh, man, everybody seemed to know this and like this. Maybe I need to get into this. Yes. It's interesting whenever I do a book talk about one that 
um, hasn't been adapted into a movie or a show because I'm having to be real specific. Um, like I've done the uglies by Scott Westerfeld oh, yeah. before and I make it very clear in the, you know, I'm like, well, in this society, everybody is, uh, wants to be pretty and no one wants to be ugly. Like I'm like hitting them over the head with it because <laughs> I know they're not coming in with any prior knowledge and I'll have some kids be like, Oh, I love that series. And others be like, well, I've never even heard of that series and so even if it, they didn't have that prior knowledge the pure interaction between each other it is it's a little bit of a well why haven't you read that yet you know so um it definitely turns some um books onto their radar that they never have heard about before or had nothing knew of nothing about going into it oh man i love it i love it so much <laughs> so if someone is going to try this lesson for the first time what advice would you give them so that they can sort of be as prepared as possible to kind of do this for the first time? Absolutely. So it's funny because I just sent the drive to my friend, uh, Deb Zeman, um, and because she's a middle school librarian in Dallas. And I was like, oh, here you go. And I didn't really explain it. And she was like, I don't think I understood the assignment. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So this is how it is. All the kids get a different bingo card. Um, I, I have, you know, many, many different forms in the, in the drive, um, so that they all don't look the same. Um, you can print them out, you can have them, you know, printed, um, like laminated, or you can do it digitally. Um, I make a, a, we're a canvas, uh, district. And so I make a module and it has, and I tell kids to scroll and pick a random one. Um, so that way they're all doing different cards. Um, and so, um, what you'll do is you'll have your description page and um, I usually print that out and I have it laminated so that I can mark off the ones that I've done. Mm, so that way I'm not like, because after you do this for a whole day of classes, you're like, did I do that with this class or that class? So, you know, yeah. I just want to make sure I can check them off as I go. And, you know, we kind of go over the rules of bingo really quick that we're going horizontal, you know, diagonal, vertical, and the free space is all, you know, free. And, um, um, and then if you get five in a row, that's when you yell bingo. Don't play your card yet. Um, but yeah, so I just read, I randomly bounce around my list of descriptions of books and I read them out. And um, sometimes if I see like a little, like kids are like, look, like you can tell when kids are confused, you know, yeah. and they'll be like, oh, I don't know what that is. They're like looking, do you have, you know, and I can see that under each, a few of them, I'll have like a little asterisk and it's like hint and it'll have like a little hint. And so like, I'll take it to that next step. Like a lot of them, you won't have to, you know, uh, and 11 year old boy going to a magic school with wizards. Like I don't have to give a right. hint with that one. Um, but there are some that like I've picked that um, are shows that maybe some kids have never even heard of, or like I'll pick some manga because I'll have, I have a very strong manga population of readers on my mm. campus. And there's some kids that are a hundred percent against manga and will never read it. So I like to give little clues on those because not everyone reads different genres, different types of books, things like that. Um, so I definitely want to make sure that the kids aren't confused or that they're lost or, you know, that kind of thing. I want this to be a pretty easy, you know, game. Um, so I make sure that I read through all of um, as many of those. We'll do several different bingos. If a kid says bingo and they didn't get it, we don't clear our cards. We keep playing um, until someone does actually get a, a bingo. And you will have a lot of false bingos because <laughs> sometimes they'll listen to their friend and their friend's like, oh, yeah, it's that one. And it's not. And so um, it's fun for them to find when someone finally does and and so it's just an, and I'm telling you middle schoolers they don't like they want it they're too cool for school and yeah. they say they don't like bingo but man you put those kids in bingo where there's like a prize at the end where it's candy or a sticker for their their Stanley and they will go crazy for it so um definitely a fun one to do with any any grade but I love my sixth seventh and eighth graders doing it <laughs> oh anytime you give them something competitive just stand back and yes. watch the first start to fly <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. I love this lesson so much. Thank you so much for sharing it. We are now going to go in a completely different direction and we're going to take a book break. <laughs> book break. Squiggy. And Yay. I love the book break. So this is your chance to share any book you want. It could be something that you've, you know, read recently, a long time ago, professional, personal, whatever, any kind of book you want to share. What's something we should have on our radar? Um, so I, I just recently read um, Daybreak at Raven Island, and it's by Fleur Bradley, and it's one that I feel like 
isn't on people's radars. And the only reason it was on, I know, right? Um, It's a middle grade book. um, And it's one that I feel like, and the only reason I got to read it is because it just got chosen for one of the 20 books for the state of Texas for our blue bonnet list, which is the um, top, you know, books for grades third through sixth. And so I always keep my eye on those because we do have six graders on our campus. And, um, I loved it because it is about three different kids, um, you know, uh, that are from different backgrounds of life. They each have different issues that they're struggling with, and they're going on a field trip um, to a former prison on an island. So it was inspired by Alcatraz, which I thought was really cool. Um, I've always thought that whole, the whole prison on an island thing was such a fun (laughs) thing to learn about, but also um, it has lots of spooky vibes and there's like ghosts involved. But one thing I felt like was really important about the book was that it talks about um, the prison reform in in America and how, um, and and in a way that's appropriate for middle grade readers, um, it really, it brings up the Innocence Project. Um, It talks about how, um, you know, that people, more people of color tend to be imprisoned than um, white people. And so it was just really um, an interesting um, take on a topic that I feel like we haven't really addressed a whole lot in middle grade reading, um, but also really like it tugged at my heartstrings. All three kids are going through something different. Um, and so like, I mean, I was like teary, but at the same time it was like spooky. And so I feel like it's going to hit a bunch of different types of readers. Um, mm-hmm. and then maybe, um, even push some of them to do more research into prison reform in America and, um, the ways that we can try to fix a broken system. And, um, and I always am here for books that inspire our kids to be advocates and, um, you know, fight the system, <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> well, that's definitely going on my TBR list. Say the title again. Yay. Um, Daybreak on Raven Island. Raven Island. It's by Fleur. It's like F L E U R Bradley. Um, and I did a, a review on it recently. Um, and I just, and she had a book on our list, um, last year or the year before too. And so she's an author that like, I don't, I don't get, I feel like it doesn't get enough book love and I really want her to, cause I feel like, uh, that, that one's going to be a, a big hit in our school. Yeah. So. That sounds amazing. I can't wait to get my uh, hands on that. That's awesome. Cool. Yay. Well, thank you. I love the book. I love the lesson. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to share all of this. Um, if people want to catch up with you, where should they go? What should they do? How are they going to find you? Um, I am on all the social medias, including Steve's favorite, Blue Sky. Um, <laughs> I am on as the Next Gen Librarian. Um, my website is thenextgenlibrarian.com. Um, reach out. I love sharing resources. Um, so if you have any questions or um, anything about it, what we've talked about today, I'm happy to share it with any librarians or teachers. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. Thanks for checking out this episode of the SLLN Podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes, which include not only a link to the lesson, but also links to the SLLN website, home to a curated list of free upcoming virtual events and resources for school librarians. It's easy to become a member of the network. Just visit the site and use what you like. If you have an idea, a question, or a lesson you want to share, you can email schoolliblearning at gmail.com. That's school, L-I-B, learning, at gmail.com. Know someone with a great school library lesson? Let us know. Until next time, be safe, be good, and be well.